I can. Oh, I mean, I can't because they're camouflaged. Is that what you're getting at? Sweet. Uh, what are the problems you need help with? 77, 86, 93. All right, 76, uh, 77, I mean. Um, so we want to uh, figure out the angle, the angle that has a sine of one half that's in between pi over two and pi, okay? So first thing you have to do is you have to know where pi over 2 and pi are. So that's going to be in the second quadrant, okay? Um, let's try and do it without, all right? So then if I draw my triangle here, if I know the sign of that is, yeah, sorry, that's a horrible pi symbol. Um, if the sine of this angle is 0.5, which is also known as 1 half, that means that the opposite side from that angle has to be 1, and the hypotenuse has to be 2, which means that this is, good, negative square root of 3, which means we've got ourselves a 30, 60, 90, and this angle is the, is the 30 degree angle because it's across from the smaller side, okay? But what we're trying to do is we're trying to find always the angle that it makes with the positive x-axis. So if this angle is 30 degrees, then this entire angle must be 150. Sadly, Addison, we're still not done because we want to do this in radians because they gave us the range uh, in terms of pi. So I have to multiply by pi over 180. What number goes into 150 and 180 evenly? 30. So 30 goes into 155 times, and 30 goes into 186 times. So my answer is 5 pi over 6. Okay? Good question. Um, what's the next one you need help with, Glory? 86. Uh, okay, 86. Find the inverse cosine of the cosine of pi over 3. All right, where is the inverse cosine uh, used for? Good. Quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. Where is pi over 3 angle? Quadrant 1, pi over 3 is equal to uh, 60 degrees. So that means that the answer is just pi over 3 because the inverse cosine and the cosine just cancel each other out and it's just pi over 3. The only time it would be something different is if this angle right here was in either quadrant 3 or 4 and then we'd have to flip it over the... Uh, Y axis to get it into the right, or over the X axis to get it in the right quadrant. Okay? Nope. Uh, okay, and then your last question, Glory, was on which one? 93. Uh, okay, find the length of the arc intercepted by a central angle of 2 pi over 3 radians. Uh, in a circle with a radius of 2. What's our formula for arc length? Anybody know? R theta. And R is the radius, and theta is the no, radians, not degrees. It's the angle in radians. So I literally just have to multiply those two things together. So you could leave this as... 4 pi over 3, or if you feel more comfortable, you could uh, multiply those out on the calculator and get an approximate answer. And uh, we were given no units, so our answer has no units either. That's the length of this arc right here, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Um, yes. It is. That's a different, you're saying a different thing. What you're saying is if I draw a circle and then I uh, highlight an arc like this, uh, how many degrees is that? I mean, what fraction of the circle do you think that is? Maybe like a sixth of it or something? Okay, so let's say that's a 60 degree arc. What you learned in geometry is that the central angle is also 60 degrees, okay? What we're talking about, though, is the actual physical distance. Like if I, yes, if I straighten it out, what would the distance be? Yeah, so it's a little bit different. Yeah. Uh, but they're related. That's why that formula is so easy, um, because they are uh, related. Um, okay, any other questions? Yeah. 39. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to Forks to watch you guys play today. Yeah. Uh, okay, 39. It says in this triangle, uh, this little symbol Addison is uh, alpha. So it says this angle is 35 degrees. And then it says the hypotenuse is 15 degrees. And so we need to find all of the missing pieces. So which one do you want to find first? This one right here? Here? Oh, this one right there? Okay. Uh, good. That's an easy one. What's that? 55, because you know the angles have to add up to uh, 180. All right. Um, you want to find A or B now, side A or B? Doesn't, let's just go with A. Um, so A is what side relative to this angle? The opposite, and we know the we know the nope hypotenuse. So who uses opposite and hypotenuse? Sine. So that tells you that the sine of 35 degrees is equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. So a is five times the sine of 35 or 15. I mean times the sine of 35 degrees. Okay, so you just do that on the calculator, Addison, but make sure that you are in uh, degree mode this time. Yeah, yeah, so once you know, Glory makes a really good point, once you know both of these angles, if, if you want to find either one of these sides, you can actually use sine or cosine, it doesn't really matter, you just have to choose the uh, correct angle. So uh, to do B, I'm just going to stick with 35 degrees. Uh, the cosine of 35 degrees is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So B is equal to 15 cosine of 35, which I don't know what that is, but you can figure it out. Uh, Will. Um, and speaking of that, McKinsey, uh, you were gone yesterday, so I recorded the lesson and I sent you uh, to your student email a link for the video. If you want to watch that and see what you missed yesterday. Sorry, no, her name is Kenzie. We've already had this conversation, um, but I called her McKinsey by accident. Thank you for pointing out my mistake to the entire class, embarrassing both me and Kenzie. And whoever's listening to my recording, which things could get real here because, oh, I got to pause this here. What? It's a weird question. All right, number 95, the angle of elevation of the top of a building from a point 100 meters away on level ground is 78 degrees. So we are definitely not drawn to scale. I guess a good question, this sort of came up the other day when we were uh, the lighthouse and the buoy. Is the height going to be bigger or smaller than 100? This is sort of a, you know, check the reasonableness of your answer. It's going to be smaller. Um, oh, no, it's going to be bigger, sorry. Because this is the biggest angle, right? So the biggest angle is across from the biggest side. This is only uh, 12 degrees, so we want to get an answer bigger than 100. Um, Braden, what do we want to use for this? Tangent. 
tangent. So the tangent of 78 degrees is equal to the opposite side, which in this case is x, yeah, divided by the height, which is 100. So to find the uh, height, we have to go 100 times the tangent of 78 degrees, which I don't know what that works out to be, but you guys can figure it out. Okay. All right, anything else? Okay, why don't you guys hang on to those uh, in case you want to use them on the test.